this morning. Sister D, I want you to guide us in prayer this morning, if you could be so kind. Lord, we thank you again for another day, Lord. We thank you for another opportunity to give you praise through the lives that we live. And Lord, even in the midst of uh, everything that's going on, we know that greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Lord, we thank you because we know that you are God who is the healer, and by your stripes we were healed. According to the word of God, we trust in you today and forevermore. We know that, Lord. We ask you to continue and bless our mayor and all the leaders of our communities across this uh, city and across the state and across the world. We thank you, Lord, for giving them guidance on how to uh, lead your people, even in the midst of these trying times. We know that nothing is too hard for you, Lord. We trust in you today and forevermore. We ask you, Lord, to even touch the hearts of those families who are grieving right now, uh, whether it was through uh, the COVID crisis or other incidences of death, Lord. We trust in you and we love you in the midst of it all. Our praises go up and your blessings will continue to flow through our community, Lord. Continue to bless this broadcast and let it empower your people. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, uh, she keeps one locked and loaded all the time. <laughs> you know, she's always ready. That's why I know I can call on her for a, a great word of prayer uh, through this difficult time and making sure that we reach out and touch those who need uh, prayer. You know, Absolutely. Chief Chief Hart, you know, our Flint Police Chief, also a candidate for the Sheriff's Department. And right now, you know, you're doing a fantastic job in the city of Flint well, thank you. Uh, for, you know, as our police leader, law enforcement leader, but also you will do a fantastic job as Sheriff. Uh, right now, uh, you know, as the things and how the emergency has been declared in the city and the county and the state and in our nation, but you know, over this particular county, the Sheriff is usually, uh, and, and, and that's how it stands, is as they're, they're the coordinators of a crisis and emergency coordination and, and and i would love to see you in that particular role because you've been doing a fantastic job with our law enforcement force as, as we look down the road south in the city of detroit they have 50 police officers right now sidelined because of the virus uh yes. and you know this coronavirus has sidelined law enforcement and, and when law enforcement goes down you know we lend ourselves to chaos yes and so but but through your leadership and through what we've been doing in, in our uh first responders uh category we have not put one individual on the sidelines because we have been proactive about uh taking precautions making sure our, our law enforcement officers and and firefighters are protected absolutely yes we are uh, we actually set up a program, Mayor, as you know, that uh, we uh, ask a couple of pertinent questions to everyone that comes in the building, uh, employees, and uh, then we take uh, their temperature uh, using a non-touch digital uh, thermometer. And uh, one of the questions is, do you feel ill? The other, have you had contact with anyone? And another, have you traveled uh, in an area where there has been uh, uh, cases? Um, of course, now we have four in, in Genesee County, but still we keep this up and uh, the employees appreciate it and hopefully uh, the public as well because it's not just to keep our employees safe but we also don't want to infect anyone when we make contact out in the field. Absolutely and, and what we've been doing and you've been a part of the department head meetings and we've had several meetings and, and, and uh, meetings to talk about triage and how yes. we're going to be uh, uh, turning City Hall into our uh, command center Yes. Uh, because if your command center goes down uh, everything else fails, you know. Absolutely. And we have many other things going on inside the city of Flint for normal operations and a sense of normalcy, yes. even going through this this crisis, this health crisis, that's real. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing yes. is real. Um, and so uh, you've been there, and so we, yes. we have to keep a, a level of, of working. And it's, it's, been, it's been a long week, Chief. It, it, it has been a long week. Everybody I've talked to said the same thing. But, sir, enjoyable. I mean, uh, we appreciate your leadership. We really do, because that's what is guiding everyone as we go through this. Um, that's where we spring our ideas from, is from you and from our, our group meetings. Right, and this is where I enlist the services of our prayer warriors. You know, I always ask for seven strong prayer, prayer warriors to go into prayer. Uh, for what we're doing and what we're engaging because the enemy is still amongst us. Yes. Uh, and that's for the faith believers and the internal and external uh, people uh, or, or enemies that we have are, are, are working about. You know, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to weed them out uh, <laughs> as fast as I can. 
uh, but God is in control of those demonic yes. type of behaviors and uh, activities. Yes. And so we have to recognize this for what it is. And, and for people like you and I, you know, we are definitely on the war path for righteousness Absolutely. and good and for people. And that's why I said we need a heart in the <laughs> sheriff's department, you know. And so, so, um, but we, we're doing fantastic work. You know, day-to-day -day operations are going on. Waste collection is very important. Yes. Making sure that we keep our area sanitized and that's our streets as well. Light department is uh, they're up by 500% of cleanup. You know, we can't get everything all the time, but we're definitely uh, doing a better job and pacing far ahead of where we were uh, one year ago Absolutely. as a community. But also, I want to remind uh, residents inside the city of Flint, uh, please place your garbage in a bag and or a can for pickup. Place your garbage in a bag and or a can. Uh, we have to make sure that we protect those who are doing uh, the sanitation pickup, uh, the sanitation picks up, pickup, and we want to make sure that your garbage gets picked up. So you can help us uh, by placing and making sure to place your garbage in a bag and or a can for pickup uh, and disposal. You know, and so you know, Chief. You know, and uh, there's other things that people can do to assist us. Because one thing about it is that, you know, levels of apathy, there's certain degrees of apathy. Yes. And apathy is like a rigor mortis in a body, right? You <laughs> yes, know, you don't want rigor mortis to set up. Don't expect everything to be just done for you. We have to engage and, and do for ourselves and others. I want you to be self-governing as it relates, relates to shelter in place. That is an activity in which we saw on the West Coast happening. Uh, people are afraid of that happening now. We have to be calculating and planning to, to uh, stop the spread of this virus. Yes. And a shelter in place, uh, more or less, is that when, if you don't have to be out and about, if you don't have to uh, go out and, uh, in the public spaces, stay at home. Yes. To protect yourself first, protect your families, and, and uh, making sure that we don't have the continuous spread of this virus. Uh, it is, is very uh, um, troubling to see how the spread of this, this virus uh, can can happen very quickly. And, and as yes. you see, Sister Dolores looks like a scrub nurse in the hospital <laughs> yes. uh, with gloves, sanitation. I don't I haven't, I haven't seen as many cleaning products since I went to Walmart last uh, on the shelf. She has everything on wipe, spray, uh, paper Make towel. Sure you guys are okay. Well, well, well she's, she's, she's double-barreled. Yes, indeed. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so if you have any questions for our, our uh, chief, and we're expecting a couple calls uh, to come in this morning um, for some other news about what is going on uh, things have been giving uh, a reprieve in many areas financially and different things. Yes. And, you know, I'm trying to implement a program in partnership with our city council to be able to assist uh, residents with the payment of their water bill. And what I'm trying to do is uh, uh, help them with a, uh, you pay a dollar, we pay a dollar. That's great. You like that? I like that. Well, I got, a, I got the team working overtime Excellent. Uh, uh, this weekend to trying to do that. Uh, I think we have one caller uh, coming in. And so, good morning, you're on with Community Update. Okay, uh, well, my, my opinion of the Second Amendment is uh, my job is to enforce the laws as they are. The Second Amendment is, is part of our laws, the Constitution, and so I protect uh, citizens' rights. As far as hoarding guns and ammunition, I, I, I think it's totally unnecessary. Uh, what we need is for people to be uh, peaceful, peaceable, and uh, to just follow the direction as, we, uh, as we're trying to help them. Uh, there should be no need for the weapons. Uh, ammunition. Uh, I understand if people want that sort of thing to go out and target practice whatever, that's fine. But again, I, I don't see it being necessary. Uh, and yes, the state police, we do have quite a number in the city. Uh, they are um, in assisting us and my uh, my staffing has, has been low for some time, but we are out there. Uh, we're running from call to call and that could be why you don't see us in general uh, uh, out on traffic, but we are there, sir. We have another caller. Again. Good, again. good morning. You're on community with the community update. Good morning. good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Is, is, this, is this Kelfani? This is Kelfani. Stephen's calling in. 
Kilfani Stevens, another one of our department heads, uh, economic development. Uh, he has uh, been brought on to uh, make sure that we can uh, secure the, the next economic development uh, tools um, by bringing bigger companies to our community. And he has some information about SBS loans and small business loans or stabilization type of activities. Kilfani, can you share with our listening audience what is going on uh, in that category? Treasury Department that that will let you 
know about a temporary relief that Treasury has put in place on uh, these on the taxes that were supposed to be due on March 20th. They have temporarily moved that out to April 20th. So again, you can contact Treasury to get more information on that program. You can also call them at 517-636-5265. And also for all of, all of those companies out there that are in retail sales and you're still operating, we thank you for what you're doing. But I also want to remind you that there are definitely laws out there on price gouging and the governor has um, signed another emergency order that that further enhances what the price gouging laws are. A few final local things that I want to tell you about. We have great partners in the Flint and Genesee Chamber of Commerce. I encourage you to go to their website where they have lots of other information about local programs, state programs, just daily information updates. Uh, also, the Michigan Chamber of Commerce, michamber.com, has some great information for you. And then finally, Mayor, uh, at the citywide level, anyone is, is absolutely encouraged, any business that has questions, you know, call us. We are doing business as as close to as normal as possible. As you know, the governor has allowed us to do some, some wonderful things with electronic meetings so that we can keep business moving forward. So if there's any questions that you have of me or I'm not sure how the show works, I'm, I'm ready to, to jump yeah. in and answer. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that the, the, the residents and the listeners of this audience knows that, you know, that we're uh, closely in tune to our federal partners as well as our state partners, and we understand how businesses uh, are, are going through some trauma right now, especially small businesses in our community, and those small businesses trickle down to small jobs, right? Uh, one, two, three, four employees maybe in some places, uh, and those businesses may not be able to withstand the trauma of what uh, the effects of this corona disease has has uh, done to our community and our nation and i wanted people to know that uh, on these levels uh, we can we can help try to find and guide them to the resources that are going to help them sustain those jobs and those businesses now kafani are we doing any concierge services at the city of flint to help guide uh small businesses through the maze of the federal and state uh process concerned about how to access these programs, they are free to, to contact us. The best way is actually to send an email, so they will send that to K Stevens, and that's S-T-E-T-H-E-N-S at cityofflint.com. And the reason why that's the best way to contact us with, um, all, with all that's going on if you are in a, a written email queue, you know, you let us know what it is that's going on, we can then assign one of our people to get back with you. So if you're going to do that, make sure you include all of your best contact information where we can reach back out to you and help you navigate the system. Again, you have the, you have the federal FDA loan. You also have, uh, beginning on April 1st, You'll have programs from the state of Michigan. And then there are also just other things that are out there. The Community Foundation for Greater Flint has money out there for nonprofits to help them continue through this. And Mayor, you're so correct about the idea that, you know, really small businesses are what we are looking at. You know, most businesses in America are actually classified as small businesses. But especially those mom and pops, those you know, one to ten person shops, we understand the, the difficulty that, that they're going through. And the other thing is, you know, we we get tied up and caught up with talking about the very very large multinational corporations, but all of those businesses begin as a small business. So if we if we want to grow, thrive, and prosper. We need to make sure that we are cultivating those smaller businesses and making sure that they come up through this better and stronger. And there are all sorts of things and ways to help you with that. And we're just here to help any way we can. 
Right. And, and a lot of that help is going to be getting information out to you, which you can find at the different website. Uh, and you can also get by contacting us via email or phone, and, you know, we will help you through. Well, thank you, and thank you for that. We got other callers calling in. Um, but you're doing a fantastic job for the residents of the city of Flint, Kelfani. Um, I think that we just lost a few callers, uh, but that's okay. But you're doing a fantastic job, and, and I appreciate the, the support that you have given uh, the residents of the city of Flint and also our team at the city uh, going through this because there, there will be life after this crisis, and we have to make sure economically that we don't fall off of a cliff. I've been criticized sometimes talking about the... the, the, the the, the, the structure of how we, we function. Mm -hmm. You know, everything works around the, the parameters of resources. Resources yeah. is done by capital and dollars, and so we have to do some things there. But thank you, Kilfani, for the great work you've been doing. God bless you, my friend. Right. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. We got a question online if you want. Yeah. Uh, we got another caller coming in. But, Chief, you know, uh, maintaining a, a level of organization uh, is, is critical thinking that we have brought to the table. Yes. You know, we have uh, problems, but we have to operate in this, is this moment, in this triage for this crisis that we're facing to, to get us out of not only one crisis, but this is a crisis on top of a crisis. Yes. Uh, and we have a lot of work to be done. And so I appreciate the team and the team environment that we have. Do we have another caller, Sister D? No. Okay. And so, so Chief, you know, uh, law enforcement, in our law enforcement activities, we we're keeping things normal as possible. Yes. We're responding to calls, but, but we're asking residents to make sure for, for non-emergency uh, activity to give them a, a call or call our police department at what number? 237-6801. Uh, right. One more time. You did that it, fast. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yes. 810-237-6801. Uh, right. And we want people to, to know that there's a level of normalcy that goes through uh, beyond, through and beyond this crisis that we're going to have to continue to provide services for our residents. Uh, residents. Yes. We have uh, uh, ordered uh, the reconnection of all, all users, water, potential water users inside the city of Flint. We have declared a, a state of emergency in our city. We were the second community in the state of Michigan to do so. We yes. did so early, and I, I'm, I'm um, very happy through our pro, uh, proactive uh, posture. Yes. We, we were safe guarding lives. Definitely. Yes, I'm ready for a call. Yep, you're on with Community Update. Hello? Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Yes, this is Tony Turner. How are you, Mr. Mayor? Hey, Tony, how you doing? We only got a couple minutes, but I know you're you're working very hard on the census count, but I'm sure you're going to tell people why they're at home, uh, you know, waiting out this uh, coronavirus to subside and, and for us to get a, a grip on it. You want them to fill out their 2020 census card, right? Yes, uh, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Very quickly, uh I want to say thank you to all of our partners, our best partners, our agencies, nonprofits, the, the Complete Count community, everyone. Uh, you know, we put forth an amended uh, outreach strategy for the city of Flint for the census outreach, and we are getting out there uh, to the grassroots. You know, we cannot afford not to touch folk at this critical moment in our lives in the middle of these crises. So what we're, we're doing, we're making sure we partner with the schools, uh, the water centers, we're getting ready to run ads. Well, matter of fact, here at WFLT, uh, we're getting ready to run census ads there, WDZZ, and other radio stations and radio spots, because what we're doing, even though our venues are shut down, we're making sure that we open up every avenue to yet touch those very hard to count populations, especially uh, those black and brown populations, Mr. Mayor, within the city of Flint. And just so you know, the city of Flint counts are starting to come here. And, but we're looking, I'm looking at the numbers, have had many calls with census intelligence, but our numbers and our very hard to count populations are lagging behind the rest of the city. So I want to say Mr. Murdoch and the team there at the office has been very supportive and we're going to get out and, you know, we had the big bang when I put forth that, uh, that piece with the uh, town hall meeting. That right. put us on the map because right. it was going well, to shut well, that well, down. So well, well, that's well, those are some of the things we're doing. Yeah, we, we had a couple more callers, Tony, but I want to thank you for the work that you're doing, and we want to encourage everybody that they have their census cards in the mail uh, that's come to their homes. Fill them out. Get them back in. Uh, as we go through the cri this crisis, we cannot forget about the other things that's important, and some of the federal dollars that's coming this way is coming this way in, in part by uh, understanding how many people we have in our community and making sure that we have enough dollars to be able to continue to uh, push back uh, the things that that's, that's causing us harm right now is very important. And thank you for your service, Tony. We're going to take another call. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Right. You're on with Community Update. Go ahead. 
Good morning. Yes, go on. Good morning. You're on with Community Update. Yeah, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, what are the police officers doing in a traffic stop so as to protect themselves and the public? Are they wearing gloves, masks, or do they change gloves between stops? And I'll take it offline. Thanks. Certainly. Uh, as far as uh, that is concerned, we are not uh, necessarily with the masks and gloves unless we feel that there's uh, an instance of uh, possibility of a contamination. We have the gloves available. We put them out there to everybody. Uh, it's limited contact, and we're trying to keep uh, a distance as much as we can. Our arm's length and your arm's length uh, matches out to about uh, the uh, requested distance of six feet. Um, and as far as uh, traffic stops, in, in many instances, it's just um, stopping to make sure that uh, people understand our, our speed limits, our uh, traffic laws. Uh, we're trying to do a lot of warnings uh, in these instances. Um, honestly, we're not uh, doing that many stops unless we see something that's kind of egregious that we feel we need to address, but mostly we're answering calls at this point. Right, and you know, as the time winds down, uh, Chief Hart, you know, soon to be Sheriff Hart, you know, we want to continue to make sure that people have a level of normalcy in their lives. Yes. Uh, we want to make sure that businesses in our community continues to thrive and, and grow and not die. Uh, so that's why we talk about these economic tools that's available uh, through federal government, state government, and lo also local government. Uh, we will provide a concierge service. Uh, the businesses can call City Hall, and Kelfani Stevens, is, that's heading up that level uh, of our activity, will show people where to go and get those dollars. Uh, he talked about $10 million in a small, low, low interest loans, yes. and also $10 million in grants. And so those things have been made available. And so we want people to make sure that uh, they, they take a, advantage of these particular opportunities and not let your business die right. and go by the wayside. Uh, we need to have, a, a, you know, we're going to get through this crisis working together and being very strategic in the way that we think and operate. Uh, you know I've been working very hard. You Absolutely. Know, I'm, I'm up at very early in the morning probably text messaging uh, part of our teams about maybe uh, 5 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. Yes. Getting ready for the start of the day. Uh, be proactive in your thinking. Stay away from those individuals that will cause, uh, continuously cause havoc. Uh, I call those uh, flesh demons. And so we got to wind it up. Sister D is telling us to get ready to get out of here so they can clean up. I love you, Mom. It's going to be a delivery service uh, for your food this morning. I'm not going to have you come out and about. But I love you guys. Stay positive, social distancing. Stay home if it's not necessary for you to get out. I love you guys. God bless. Love you, Mom.